Jesus Christ. You are a second citizen. Even for Nigeria. Human beings have been born here and there. Don't say we are saved here. <laughs> what happened in Ukraine and uh, USA? If it happened here, where will you go? Where will you go? Where will I go? Let's pray for Nigeria. Let's pray for Nigeria. Lord, send out the bad leaders. Give us good leaders. Give us good leaders. Look at how this country is comfortable. Is it not good? But why our own country is so, is so callous, so wicked? Begin to pray. Pray them out. Pray them out. Makaku River. Pray them out. Pray them out. Let there be peace, total peace in Nigeria. We want peace in Nigeria. We want a total peace in all over Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Psalm 122 verse 6 said, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love thee shall prosper. Pray for the peace of Nigeria. Nigeria as a nation, even if you are going to divide, even if we are going to divide, there must be peace. There must not, the, 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 we don't want the blood shed. We don't want blood shed. According to what God gave me as a revelation from the beginning of last year, it's so terrible. And I've been telling people, there will be a lot of problems in Nigeria. Begin to pray. There will be no problem. There will not be a shed of blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for the peace of Nigeria. Please pray. Intercede for Nigeria. Intercede. In Jesus' name we pray. I witnessed this from Archbishop Anthony Daouya very well. Because I was under his ministration in the federal administration. He interceded. He said they need a visa. They will not hold meeting in Nigeria. And he interceded. And he was stopped there from holding a meeting. Hallelujah. In all over Nigeria as well. Archbishop Anthony Daouya. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the unity, body of Christ. The Christian are not united. Don't let us deceive ourselves. This one we say as Christian. This one we say as believers. This one we say as believers. So that is what the devil came for. Hallelujah. We're going to pray, Lord, unite the body of Christ. Unite the body of Christ. You can see that in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. Oh, Lord, unite the body of Christ. Of Jesus, begin to pray for the unity of the Christian body as a whole. Begin to pray for the Christian body as a whole. Pray, we are shaking. The foundation of Christianity is shaking. A lot of people are even backsliding. Begin to pray for unity of the Christian bodies. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. The King of Kings will bless your holy name. We thank you for the soul that will come to your presence today to, re- to be blessed. Father, accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus. As we go further, let your presence dwell with us in the name of Jesus. Speak to us, speak with us audibly in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the enemy be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that have evil thoughts to carry out in this disciple in this, in this uh, 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 auditorium today, let them be exposed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we saturate this environment with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. You are welcome. God bless you.
I set it down for Sunday school. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, our Lord and our God, we thank you and once again this morning. We appreciate you, Almighty God, for the privilege we have to gather before you this morning. We thank you for our activity for last week. We thank you for this week because I've come under your feet to learn this morning. Daddy, let the Holy Spirit take over the lesson of this morning in the name of Jesus. Give us understanding of everything we shall be studying today in the name of Jesus. The purpose for which you have brought up this topic, let it be fulfilled in the life of our people in the name of Jesus. Our coming here this morning will not be a waste, but it will fulfill and achieve its purpose in the name of Jesus. At the end of the study, let your name be glorified. We worship and bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Good morning, church. Yes, um, before I go into the lesson, please, uh, I want us to, I want to remind us to download the, to go to the app on our phone to download the RCCG uh, Sunday School Manual. It is easier for people that are using Android, but if you are using iPhone, uh, my sister, dear, what's your name? Oyin will help us to we'll, we'll put you through in case you have any uh, challenge uh, downloading it on your iPhone. Praise the Lord. So who can remind us what we studied last week? Last week, who can remind us what we studied last week? Yes. Last week, we studied the spotless bride. The spotless bride. That was what we studied last week. The spotless bride. Am I correct? So what do we understand? What do we remember in what we studied last week on the spotless bride? What one or two things can we still remember from that particular lesson? Yes, what can we remember from what we studied last week? We have to be clean in all our ways. Yes. Yes. We say yes. Comment to be without any cross, but thank you, sir. That we have to be spotless and we study the essence of uh, being spotless. Why do we have to be spotless? Now I have a challenge now to open that of today. It's not giving me issues. See, that's what we talk about. Technology sometimes. Yes, because it is a command. So we just have to, because it's the commandment of God, which we have no choice than to comply. So it's the commandment of God that we have to be spotless. And we just have to appear spotless. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God today, we shall be studying the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb. What 
shall be taking one lesson behind the Sunday school manual that we'll be using so that will avail the teachers the opportunity to do uh, a preview. What we discovered is that they release, they upload uh, the lesson for each week, maybe on Friday or Saturday before the Sunday. And we want to be doing, in our preview, we want to be doing two lessons per weekend so that we will not be meeting every uh, Saturday to do preview. But we now discover that if we were to if we study that off, uh, uh, if yesterday we study that off today, there will be nothing for us to preview against next week. That means we have to miss it. So because of that, I just want to let us know that we will be one week behind the the manual we'll be using in Nigeria. So please, bear with us. This is, we have to, excuse me, we have to figure that out yesterday. The teachers have to agree that, okay, we'll be one week behind what they are studying in Nigeria. As time goes on, you will understand. Praise the Lord. So by the special grace of God today, we shall be looking at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb. What does the marriage supper of the Lamb entail? Who is marrying who? Who is the bride? And who are the groom? I mean, who is the groom? And who are the brides? Because in this case, the brides are many. So who is the groom? And who are the brides? What are those things that will qualify you to partake of the marriage supper? When I was giving an illustration yesterday, we are going to get to it. Uh, I just said we have we must have heard of it or have been privileged to attend some uh, marriage like that, some wedding like that, that when you want to attend, it must be strictly by invitation. It is not the type of marriage to say, ah, Mugbomo branch, uh, please come and accompany me to or uh, I heard that somebody didn't invite me, but I will go. These are the marriage that it is strictly by invitation. You cannot just put on your your aguada and baba the and say, oh, it must, you must be invited. These are the type of wedding that you get to at the wedding reception. You see bouncers like this. And so, ah, so it is, your, it is your, your IV that you have in your hand that will grant you access into the wedding reception. Praise the Lord. So when we... Talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 9. Revelation chapter 19 verse 9. It's, and he said unto them, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. And this is where I was coming from when I said that there are some marriage that is not everybody that is going to attend. There are some specific people. And that's why he said, blessed are they that have that privilege. To be invited or to partake. So it is not everybody. It is not everybody's thing. But there are some people that will partake of that marriage supper. While there are some people that will not partake. And that is why that memory verse say, Blessed are they. They are blessed. They are highly favored. God counts them qualified to be a partaker of that marriage supper. As we study along, we're now going to see what is that thing that qualifies them? What is that thing that put them at edge or, or give them advantage 
over others who could not or who are not privileged to partake of the marriage supper. So in the memory verse, it tells us, it says, blessed are they which are called. I want to use that call to say which are invited. Just like when you are invited to a, to a marriage uh, function and you are invited with the invitation, the invitation is a call to you that please come. We are having our, our sons and our daughter are getting married. We are inviting you to come and partake of the marriage. So, so blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the sayings of the Lord. Now, let us, the, 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 the text for this study is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 1 to 9. The last verse of it is the memory verse we just uh, read. Revelation, chapter 19, verses 1 to 9. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he had judged the great wars, which did corrupt the earth with their fornication, and had avenged the blood of his servants at a hand. And again they said, Hallelujah! And a smoke rose up forever and ever. Verse 4. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God and that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And the voice came out from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servant, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were the voice of the great multitude, and the voice of many water, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and the wife hath made herself ready. Verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the linen, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And verse 9, the last verse. And he said unto me, Write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. Hallelujah. Marriage in this context symbolizes the union between Christ and the church. It is literally talking about Christ and the church. Christ being the bridegroom and the church, yourself, and myself being the bride. Who in verse 7 said, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and the wife had made herself ready. Just as, as is expected that yourself and myself, which is the bride that Christ is coming to take, should get ourselves ready. To get ourselves prepared, to make sure that we appear spotless, without wrinkle, without blemish. To make sure, as said in verse eight, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed. That is how God expects us to appear in verse eight. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the linen is the righteousness of saints. That is how Christ expects to meet us. Without spots, without wrinkle, without blemish, without stain. 
the in the marriage here on earth, when you see the bride, if you see me, for example, now I am a lady. You know me very well. Pimples all over my face. That is my natural look. But when, if it is on the marriage day, if you see me, you will know, you will not know me again. After I must have applied perfect finish, foundation, Mary Kay, and everything else, and you know all those things, that when you see me like this, you know this is the person again. Because all those spots, all those pimples, all those scratches, they, will, they have a way of painting it up that it will not even appear. Because you want to appear clean, beautiful, gorgeous, spotless. That is how God expects us to appear before him. And when we are talking about being spotless here, I want to take us back to our study last week. Spotless, there are little, little dots. Little, little dots. You might not be, you might not have killed somebody, or you might not have uh, been committing adultery, you might not have been doing big or terrible or Little, little lies. Little, little lies. Somebody wanted me to do something for him this morning. And I woke up this morning. I saw my phone. I said, the person that asked me, can I do this at this time? I wanted to say, I am in church. I said, ah. I said, no. And I won't say I'm in church. I said, I'm preparing for church. So that if I say I am in church, at least it will get off my back. You understand why I can't do it. But I am not in church. I was still at home. I was actually preparing for church. But I could have said I am in church. But that spirit told me, mm -mm 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 -mm. don't say that. You are going to church to go and teach on uh, being spotless and be without wrinkle. Are you, are you sure you, you are not carrying spots to church already yourself? So I just told the person, I am preparing for church. Period. So those little, little things that we do not count, those little, little things, ask you something, do you have it? You have it, but you say, no, I don't have it. Where are you? I am, uh, I am not at home. Where else you are at home? Little, little things that we do not count are those things. You say we should be a church I mean, we should be people without spots, blemish, or wrinkle. These are the little things that we do not count that can be an hindrance. Why our garments will be stained? Why the bridegroom will consider us not fit enough to be his bride? Yesterday, when we did review, I talked about making preparation and making adequate preparation. Now, using the example of the 10 virgins, all of them were prepared. But five made adequate preparation, and five were inadequately prepared for the coming of the bride. So it's not as if they did not prepare. Fine, they prepared. They had oil, but they do not have enough oil that will sustain them so the coming of the bridegroom. So while they went out of the oil to go look for oil, that was when the bridegroom came. So as much as we are preparing today, oh, um, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. It is not the beginning of the race that actually matters. It is how did you end the race. So if we are preparing today, I am a Christian today, I am a believer today, I am spirit-filled today, what about tomorrow? What about next tomorrow? What about the end of this year? Will I still be in place? Will I still be prepared? So it's coming for a church without blemish, without spot, without wrinkle, and that is what the bridegroom wants to see. So that verse 9, that you say, no, I beg your pardon, verse 8, say, and to her was granted 
who says the, the bride now. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. He expects us to appear sparkling white, without spot, without wrinkle. So those little, little things that we do not count. If, I, if you have money and I ask you for money, don't tell me, ah, I don't have anything on me. Oh, I have something on me, but I'm sorry, I'm very, very sorry. I will not be able to give you because I want to use it for something. I already want to, you know, you give the person explanation. But if you ask me for something and I say, ah, I, I'm sorry, I don't have anything on me. And we are as I have. Those are the spots. Little things that we do not count. Backbiting. Gossiping. Evil thoughts. Those little, little things. Hey, I don't fornicate. I don't do idolatry. I don't, uh, uh, I don't kill people. You consider that not big sin. But those little, little things that you do not count will be the spots that will stain a garment. I pray that Lord Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. If we look at verse 1, verse 2, verse 4, he keeps talking about hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. At the marriage supper, that is, the, not, that is the music they are playing. Unlike in the world, here we are, they play all manners of other songs. But here, it is just hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is an heavenly language. It is the music, it is the shout of joy. When we look at um, verse 6, and I heard as it were the voice of great multitudes, and as the voice of many water, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. It was, there was a shout, a, a, a loud noise of chorus shouting, Hallelujah. Celebration for people who are able to make it to the marriage supper, who got invitation. And that is why the memory verse says, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because not everyone, and that was why I illustrated earlier on with the illustration of being invited, being invited to a wedding strictly on invitation. Or you have attended those weddings that it is strictly on invitation. You cannot just put on your clothes and say you want to attend if you do not have a invitation card. Now, description of the marriage. We are going to take two out of that description of the marriage and the importance and qualification. Now, the meaning, the marriage supper of the Lamb is the consummation of the union between Christ and the bridegroom. Sorry, between Christ, the bridegroom, and the church, the bride. is the consummation of the union between Christ, which is the bridegroom, and the church, which is the bride, without spot or wrinkle. Ephesians 5.27. Yes. Mm -hmm. It should be holy and without blemish. That is the criteria. It should be holy and without blemish. I remember about a few weeks ago when I was taking uh, something like this, when I talked about when, a grad, when a, 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 the dean of a faculty is graduating a student and we present them, these are the students that have qualified, having satisfied the certain condition, the university condition, and so, 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 so. Having met the requirement, these are the people that are far, and we are here by present them. So that's the same way Christ wants to present us to his father, that look, after their journey, after their sojourn, after their 
going up and down on earth, these are the people that I hereby present to you that have come out clean, without spot, without blemish, without blemish. So that's the same way he wants to present us. But he cannot present us to the Father if we have spot, if we have wrinkle, if we have stain, if we have blood in our hand, if we have things that could disqualify us. And that is why it is important for us on a daily basis to keep watch, to guide our righteousness, to guide our salvation, to ensure that to ensure that our salvation is sustained, that it is not tampered with, that we do not compromise the standard of God for the things of this world, because if we have spot, if we have blemish, if we have wrinkle, we might not be good enough. The bridegroom may not find us attractive enough for his bride. I pray that the Lord Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. So, now, time of the events, the marriage will take place after the rapture of the saints. But the second, but before the second phase of the second coming of the Lord. Well, I think the marriage supper itself is embedded in the rapture. The marriage supper itself, it's part of the rapture. It is not a physical marriage now. It's not a physical marriage, we are, but the, the, the marriage supper is just an illustration to describe the rapture and what will happen. When we look at um, the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the benefit of those that are just joining us today, we are using the Nigerian Sunday School Manual. Just go to your phone. If you are using Android, download RCCG Sunday School Manual 2022. It's much easier if you are using Android, but if you are using um, iPhone, my sister there will uh, put you through in uh, getting it fixed. So First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So that is the marriage supper itself. Those that are on earth catching up with Christ in heaven is the marriage supper. So at the invitation is when two people will be going, one will be left behind, Another person will be taken away. Two people will sleep on the bed. One will be taken away. Another person will be taken away. That is the marriage supper. They are already getting their invitation. To, so the marriage supper itself is the catching up of the saints with Christ in heaven. So that's why I said the marriage supper of the Lamb is the consummation of the union between Christ, which is the groom, and the church, yourself and myself at the church. And that is why I said earlier on that in this case, that the bride are many. But not everyone will make it, but I pray that yourself and myself will make it in Jesus' name. And one thing that has to be done for us to make it is to ensure that we appear before him at all time without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Because this is what we need to appear before him. Any question, any contribution? Any question, any contribution before I proceed? 
Any question, any contribution? Okay. So, the event will take place after the rapture of the saints, but before the second phase of the second coming of the Lord. So, between the first phase and the second phase of the Lord's second coming. So, after the dead in Christ have been taken off, then those that are here on earth that are still living, that are qualified for rapture, will be taken off. I said it sometimes here that the first judgment have taken place at rapture. We are still waiting for judgment seat of God and the first judgment have taken place. Why do I say that? Because I say, what is the criteria that Jesus used to leave somebody behind and take somebody away during rapture? It means that that person that is left behind has a question mark, has a case to answer. If you are clean, you would have been taken away. It is not uh, our earthly professor or lecturer that will say, oh, that man hates me. That man does not like me. That man said, I'm not going to pass his course. It is not like that. And that is why the scripture that we read, when we look at it, I think the verse 2 or verse 3 of it, I think the verse 2 or verse 3 of, of the scripture that we read talked about him judging. He said, uh, verse 2, for true and righteous are his judgments. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, verses 2 now. We read verses 1 to 19. But I'm trying to point out something in verse 2. He said, for true and righteous are his judgments. His judgments are true and righteous. So in that first judgment, he has, he has considered some fit to be rapturable and some unfit to be raptured. And what did I do? I did not do anything. This man hates me. It's not like that. He has assessed you already to say, okay, this is this, this is that. So my interpretation of the judgment before the throne of God is just to, is just to make you understand why you are where you are. If you have made it to heaven with God, these are these are these are these. Just like somebody that commits murder or commits adultery. When he gets to the law court, the judge will say, ask him, are you guilty or not guilty? Even though they find knife in his hand, stabbing somebody. They will say, ask him, are you guilty or not guilty? Just want to hear him, just to give him the opportunity to say what he has to say. But the mere fact that he committed murder instances of getting out of it is uh, very remote. So that's why when I say that the first judgment have taken place by Christ leaving somebody behind and taking somebody away. So if you are good enough, if you are not having spot, if you are not having wrinkle, if you are not having blemish in the first place, you will not be left behind. So, that is why we have to stay pure. We have to stay clean. We have to get ourselves ready. The preparation of yesterday is not enough for today. And the preparation of today might not be enough for tomorrow. Because why? Every day, every day, every day, our actions, our deed, our thoughts will be judged. And that is why it's important for us to ensure that we are ready. Because we do not know, unlike the earthly marriage, they give a date that um, or September 18 or September 22nd, this marriage is coming to take place. We are invited. But in this marriage that we are talking about here, 
you don't know the date, I don't know the date. You don't know the date, I don't know the date. It is when the bridegroom say he's ready, that is when he's ready. The ten virgin, they were waiting. They were waiting. Only God knows for how long they have waited. They do not know when the bridegroom will appear. It was at the bridegroom time that he appeared. So unlike the earthly wedding that we do, marriage that we do, we have a fixed date that, oh, in September or in October or in November, so, 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 day to this brother and this sister are getting married. But in this marriage supper of the Lamb, we cannot say. We cannot determine. We don't know when it is going to take place. And that is why we just have to be prepared. I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. If you have any question or contribution, please draw my attention so that I can interfere. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Yes, uh, my brother just reiterated the essence of this lesson. Yeah, like the, the, the Boy Scout uh, slogan, be prepared. We should forever be prepared. We do not have excuse. You have heard the message in the church. You have uh, read the Bible. We have, I have a lot of messages. Uh, my brother, my sisters, let me tell us this. There is no new message you want to hear that we have not heard. There is no new message. There is nothing that we need to hear that we have not heard. There is nothing we need to be told that we have not been told. Everything that will make us to live a holy, a righteous life, to live a life without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, have been laid before us. It is now a personal choice of our own if we want to. So the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And that's why we keep on hammering it and hammering it and hammering it. They, recy they recycle this topic in next year's on the school manual. It's still going to be there. Because we need to be reminded from time to time that we just have to get ourselves prepared. We have no excuse. We have no defense. We have no reason. And that was why I said earlier on that our preparation yesterday it's not enough for today. You might be prepared yesterday. Some people, they were spirit-filled, firebrand for God. They were very active for God three, five years ago. But where are they today? I beg you, I'm in America. I can't kill myself. I've come here to enjoy myself. I can't put on all this Nigerian thing. They church, 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 church. Uh, I beg, please, I want to have my peace here. So, at some point, they, wear, they have where they were with God. But today, where they are with God is far, far less than where they were with God some years back. So also, yesterday, we were
were in a certain place. We had a certain relationship with God. Today, we are away with God. I said it in one of my messages during the, the main church, that if your spiritual life in a certain year was like this, in 2020, was like this. In 2021, God expects your spiritual life to move up to this level. In 2022, you expect your spiritual life to move higher to this level. But when your spiritual life is declining, when it is coming down, then there is a problem. Then what, that type of person is not prepared at all. I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Yes, my sister, briefly, please. was dead, I was singled out because of his lifestyle, because of the way he lived his life. Please let us look at our lifestyle. God has invited all of us to this wedding, and here we are. But check your lifestyle. Look at the person beside you. Is she living the life that God is required of her? Am I living the life that God is required of me? If you are not living the life, even though you are invited to that wedding, you cannot participate. That is the teaching of Jesus in that book of Matthew. With this teaching that we are doing today, you have been invited. This wedding, you are also the guest. God does not, like, leave you out. He brings you in. But look at your lifestyle. If your lifestyle, there is still any hunger in you, malice, adultery, idolatry, anything, just name it. If you are still practicing it, you are just the guest in the wedding feast, but you don't have the attire. I pray that God Almighty will help us to put on the right attire in Jesus' name. Thank you, God bless you, ma'am. So what is it all about? It is still that we have to get ourselves prepared. A lot of us have not prepared. Let me ask you that question. If rapture comes today, how many of us can boldly say, yes, I know I will make it? How many can confidently say that, I know I will make it? But yet, if pastor takes a message in the church and do altar call, people still do not come out. But he said, <laughs> if you are ashamed of me here, yeah, on that day, I will also be ashamed of you. I used to look at it when Pastor call, make altar call. People who went to club last night and drink and carry women home, we still did not feel that it's necessary for them to come out. They say if you want to give your life to Christ, they will still overlook at you and look at us. It doesn't concern them. It doesn't move them. But they know their hands are stained with blood. Their spot, their, their, their garment is not white. Their garment has stain all over it. All manners of spot, all manners of stain, all manners of blemish, all manners of things that will make them not fit, attractive for the bridegroom to consider them as a bride for him. But yet, when they have the opportunity to give their life, when the altar call is made, because they are ashamed, say, ah, how can people say me? Ah, no, rather they just overlook it and still continue to live in their sin. What did the Bible say about people that cover up their sin? He said they shall not prosper. It is important for us to do a critical examination of our lives and see where we stand. That are we actually standing right with God or is there something we need to settle with God? I pray that the Lord Almighty to help us in Jesus' name. This is a very serious lesson that we have to, this is a lesson we have to take very serious because to be honest with you, a lot of us are not prepared. We are only pretending to be prepared but the truth is that we are not prepared. Let us be very, let us be very sincere with ourselves here. This is the moment of truth. A lot of us are not we have not even started the preparation at all. We are not even we are not even near it. But we are only pretending to have prepared. We don't even have oil in our lamp at all, let alone having enough oil. It is one thing to have oil in your lamp, 
and the oil is not enough. It's another thing not to have enough oil. Some of us do not even have oil in our lamp at all. We do not even have oil in our lamp at all. We are not, we are not yet there. We are not near it at all. But we are only pretending we are only Christians on Sunday. And Monday to Friday, we are something else. I pray that God will touch our hearts. That when you go back and reflect upon your life and ask yourself, where am I? The Bible says, let every man examine himself. He did not say, I should examine you. And he did not say, you should examine me. He said, but let every man at your closet, on your bed, ask yourself that question. Hmm, if Christ should come today, am I, am, I, am I really ready? Am I ready for it? Am I near it at all? Am I prepared? So let every man examine himself. I'm not to examine you. You are not to examine me. Am I examining you wrongly? Am I might be a failure or you might examine me rightly and say, ah, this one man that wears suit on Sunday and hold microphone and, oh, you are examining me and say, you give me pass mark. No. But say, let every man examine himself. Let me examine myself. You to examine yourself and ask yourself, where do I really stand? I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Any question, any contribution? Yes, sir. Like somebody is in a pit, and you are stretching forth your hand down to help him, and he's putting his hand down. Is it the air you are going to use to pull him up? So we need to help ourselves. The Bible says that the devil is a accuser of brethren. Whatever you do, he's monitoring you daily basis. Whatever we do, the devil is monitoring us. It's just like what uh, the, uh, the minister said this morning. He said he wanted to tell somebody, somebody that is, is in the church, and he's not yet in the church. And if he said that, the devil would report him to God. And he's going to the pulpit. He wants to go and preach. You know that he had just said lie now. He said lie. And that lie can block him of so many things. So many things. So he is an accuser of brethren. Daily basis, studying us. That is why you need to be asking God, God, what have I have done today wrong? Forgive me and take it out of me. Give me the grace to be above sin. Give me the opportunity to be above sin. He's accuser of brethren. Even between the wife and husband, he's accuser of brethren. Praise the Lord. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The summary of it all is we need to get ourselves prepared. The bridegroom is coming to take away the brides. But his brides will be without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. He wants to present us to God a spotless church. And we just have to make ourselves qualified. We will not be able to take that uh, today. But next week, Sunday, we will still be taking this class so that we can step one week backward to the uh, manual they are using in Nigeria. So as we go to take the concluding part of this lesson next week, Sunday, and there we will be looking at what is that thing that will qualify you that will grant you access. I talked about the wedding invitation that uh, it's like a, a, a wedding that is strictly by invitation. What makes it strictly by invitation? Certain things qualify them, those that are invited. So what are those things that will qualify us to partake of the marriage supper with the Lamb? Not everybody on earth will make it to that marriage supper. But those that will make it what are those things? 
that will qualify them to be at the marriage supper. I pray that the Lord Almighty will help us all in Jesus' name. Now, he said, the personalities in the marriage, the bride and the groom, the bride, which is the wife, is the redeemed or saint of all ages who had parts in New Jerusalem. Those are the personalities that we partake in the wedding. The brides and the groom. And the bridegroom. Now, the bride is the wife. Is the redeemed or saint of all ages who are part in the new Jerusalem. The husband, the bridegroom, is the Lord himself. The husband, the bridegroom, is the Lord himself that is coming to get married to the bride, which is the church. And where is the venue of the marriage? The venue, it is believed that the marriage will take place in heaven, in heavenly realms, when those that are on earth will catch up with him in the sky. And that is why we have to get ourselves prepared so that we're qualified for that. I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Before we close, any question, any contribution? Does anybody have any question as regards what we have taught today? Any area you want us to make clarification? Yes, ma'am. of the day you pay with your blood and you make it at the church second rapture why do you up to now is that true it is it is a half true the what i say it is half true is that the truth part of this is that there will be great tribulation where they will be under the uh, torment, the punishment of the devil who is running the affairs of the earth, or will be running the affairs of the earth at that time. But what will only make them to pass that hurdle is if they do not submit themselves to the rulership of the devil at that time. If they are able to resist, they do not take the mark of the beast. They do not subject themselves to the authority. Because then, to, for you to be able to buy this, for you to be able to do this, you must have that mark. And if you want to maintain your stand in Christ, you will absolutely resist that regardless of the torment, regardless of the punishment, regardless of the suffering at that time, one will say, no, I will not give in to the devil. So if one has the grace to be able to do that, yes, the person will, of course, be absorbed into the fold of the saints after the end of the, the great tribulation. But if the person cannot withstand it, then the person will join, if the person takes the 66 mark, and I mean, accept the rulership of the devil at that time, then the person will have no choice than to go the way the devil and his agent goes. And that is why I keep on saying, I used to say that thing, that it is better to go with the first boss. That when you go with the first boss, when you make rapture, whatever happened thereafter, you don't know. It's, not, it's none of your business because you have made the first boss. But if, you, if, if one could not make it with the first boss, and it's now waiting for the second boss. The torment, the trial, the trouble, the persecution of that time. The, when we studied this thing, the tribulation, some months ago, he said, what we are experiencing today is nothing compared to what will happen at great tribulation. That it is nothing 
We are complaining of hardship. Ah, this economy is too hard. Ah, there is fighting and war. There is killing all over places. They are doing this. They are doing that. You say you have. You have. Uh, uh, let me say the American way. They say you haven't seen nothing yet. You, are, you have not. They've not seen anything yet. What will happen at that time? What we are experiencing today is not in any way near what will happen at great tribulation. So for somebody to now say, so if we are, if what we are going through today, we are complaining, ah, the economy is hard, things are expensive, oh, they are killing people, they are shooting people, this is happening, that is happening. Now we are complaining. But what will happen at great tribulation, we, I can't describe how in, in how many fold multiply what, we are hap- what is happening today. And that's why I keep on saying that it is better for somebody to struggle now to suffer now and enjoy eternity with God than to enjoy now here on earth and uh, end up waiting for the second boss that one is not sure if one will be able to withstand it or not. What I mean by the second boss is that after great tribulation, if somebody is not able to withstand that period, I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, I want to close on that here this morning. Let us bow down our head and talk to God. God has taken this on the school message this morning in a new dimension. Let us ask God, Father, help me to take away every spot, every wrinkle in my life. A lot of us have wrinkle. We have spot. We have blemish all over our life. But we are pretending that all is well. But our hands are stained with blood. Our garments are stained. Our garments have all manners of spot, all manners of wrinkle, all manners of blemish. That when the bridegroom come. If you consider those things, will not be qualified. Father, help me this morning. Help me this morning. Help me this morning. Use the bleach of heaven to wash away every spot, every wrinkle, every stain in my garment, everything in my life, oh Lord, that will make me unfit to stand before you, that will make me an unfit bride before you. Help me, oh Lord, this morning. Wash away my stain. Wash away my sin. Wash away my blemish. Everything in my life, oh Lord, that is that will not allow you to see me. That will not allow you to see me. That will not allow you to accept me into your fold. Take them out of my life today, oh Lord. As from this moment, Lord, let me live a new life. In the name of Jesus, Almighty Father, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. As we go to the service this morning, let it go with us. In the service of this morning, glorify yourself, oh Lord. It's a prayer service as we open heaven and open our mouth to cry unto heaven this morning in the this, in this service today. Daddy, let our prayers and petitions be, be answered in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. We appreciate your holy name. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. with the fruit of our lips. Somebody rise to your feet and begin to acknowledge the presence of the Most High God in our midst this morning. Begin to acknowledge the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Reference and worship His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody exalts the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody appreciate the only living God. Say beautiful names. Tell his wonders, tell of his wonders, tell of his wonderful things. He's our Father, he's our Lord. Lord, we thank you, we bless your holy name. We give you praise, almighty God. We give all the glory unto you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Should I? El should I? Elohim and Adonai. Yet to wait, you still the same by the power of your name. El should die. Should I Elohim and Adonai? I will praise and lift you up. Else should I 
Somebody worship him. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of your name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai. I will praise and lift you high. El Shaddai, Lord, I will praise and lift you high. El Shaddai. The Lord's goodness, His mercy and compassion. Oh yes, I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hey, I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we say, Oh Lord, you are so good. You are so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent. In my life.
lifted me, has lifted me. You took away, you took away the chains that held me back. Oh, this Worship on the Shahiano. The great and mighty God will worship you. We honor you. We hallow your name, you are Lord. Hey, are we ready? Yano, Yano, on the Shah, on the Shah, Yano. of the Lord. Somebody, God, your best this morning. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Now the Lord has made, now the Lord has, I will. 
Everybody appreciate him. Go ahead and worship his majesty. The clear that he reigns. He now comes under bush. Lord, you reign forevermore. You reign, Almighty God. You reign. You reign. You reign. You King. And we call him. You are mighty on your throne. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him praise. He's a great God. Let's thank God for his wondrous work in our life. Today is the 212th day of year 2022. And you are still standing. Give God praise this morning. Appreciate him. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. It is him 